Thinking Byzantine here, and today we'll be talking about at and Now before we get into this video, I'd like to say that I'm not a financial advisor, this is, your own this is my own opinion. Please do your own research before making any financial decisions. Now let's jump right in. So at and has been having a rough, I guess, year since uh, at and announced their deal to spin off uh, their uh, Time Warner segment and combine it with Discovery. Um, at and recently had their earnings and then following their earnings, the stock dropped to the price point we're now at, at around uh, $24.36. Yeah, earnings was with, within the last week, just letting you guys know, it was very recent earnings, but let's stop the rambling and just get on with it. So now we have more details on the the spin on the you know the spinoff. It's actually going to be a spinoff instead of doing that. I forgot what it's called, but I think Stanky suggest like uh, had another proposal where you turn AT and T shares into uh, Warner Bros. Discovery shares um, that will lower the account of 18 t shares and therefore raise the price of 18 t shares um i guess they didn't go with that one and just went with the one that's a bit more easier to understand where everyone who holds an 18 t share will get uh, some water media shares um also they expect a dollar and 11 cent dividend so 6.3 percent yield um they i guess um, Barons or whoever did these calculations think uh, Warner Media Bros Discovery shares or the stuff or the amount that the AT&T holders will receive will be around six dollars and seventy cents. And part of the deal is AT&T will get some money back to pay down some debts, and I'm I'm not sure if all the forty-three billion dollars will be paid. In cash, I'm guessing some of it will be in bonds and whatever uh, Warner, Pre Warner Media decides to give to AT&T. And I guess this article says that uh, AT&T expects to drop $24 billion on capital investments. And those capital investments will probably be in 2 to 5G network. I mean, after all, AT&T has spent a lot of money on buying a Spectrum. So their total revenue is for, for around 41 billion. Um, operating expenses are around 35.5 billion, or so we get a net income around around 5 billion, close to 5 billion, a bit under it. But uh, what we're really interested in is this number here. Keep this number in mind because we're going to do a very rudimentary calculation um, of AT&T's value. I mean, I did two, but uh, these are very rudimentary. Um, probably should do a DCF and then have multiple variables, uh, like play around those variables to see what numbers you get. But I decided to do these methods. One method I'm not sure of is a very good way to judge the value of stock, but another one is a dividend discount. It's a time-tested, uh, way of valuing a stock, or it's a traditional way, I guess. So, Warner Media segment, uh, they bring in around $1.573 billion, okay? So we subtract it, and, we're, and then divide it, like we subtract uh, um, AT&T's total earnings this quarter, divided minus uh, uh, Warner Media's uh, earnings this quarter and we get the 3.419 billion and then we divide that by this number right here and we get around 68 percent so 68 percent of AT&T's earnings comes uh, from other segments that are not Time Warner so Time Warner is being spinned off and combined with Discovery so this is the type of uh 
of earnings, like they'll be keeping, they'll be keeping around 68% of it. Um, I mean, these numbers, this percentage could change. I mean, if we go back here, we could see that uh, last year, the Time Warner or the Warner Media segment brought in 2.5 billion. If we go back up here, I guess wrong one. Let's go here. If we look at uh, last year, uh, AT&T lost money, but yeah, so take this uh, number of a bit of salt, but that's what I'm trying to get at. And we times this percentage with the current stock price, and we get around $16.68. And then we add in the price of the shares that uh, you would get from this spinoff, which uh, was calculated by Barron's, I believe. So six dollars and seventy cents, and we get a fair value of twenty-three dollars and thirty-eight cents. Assuming, uh, I guess, with this this number that uh, um, AT and T um, does not get reevaluated, like there's no P expansion or um, PE contraction, so keeping the same evaluations in terms of PE. And this pro number would probably change mainly because uh, AT&T is getting some money and debt back from Time Warner that they could use to pay down their debt and lower their interest payments, and lower their amount in general, which will of course give them the lo a lower EBITDA. So, not sure the validity of using this method, but it's a number just to keep an eye on. Um, if we use a dividend discount, uh, we get uh, $22.64. And if let's add that 18, that, uh, uh, you know, the shares that you get from the spinoff, you get a fair value of at t of around $29.34. Um, for this uh, dividend discount, I'm assuming that the dividend will grow at 2% a year, which is, and we're only going with a discount of, uh, like, uh, our what required rate of return is only 7%. Um, it's 0.05 because here, as you can see, it's because dividend discount, it'd be uh, your required rate of return minus the, the growth. You get 0.05, so that's how I got that. This number here. So if we use uh, this metric, AT&T is slightly overvalued. This metric here, we'll say AT&T is very undervalued. So in any case, what are your guys' thoughts on AT&T? Do you think AT&T is going in the right direction, and do you think um, what's can called a, uh, I keep forgetting that Time Warner Discovery, it's a very mouthy name, I guess. Do you think Time Warner Discovery, or Warner Media Discovery, <sighs> I'm sorry, but, uh, would that new company be able to compete with Netflix and Disney? This is Thinking Byzantine, and have a good day.